All right, here we're going to do a couple more examples of derivatives involving uh, logarithms. So in part C, we've got g of x equals log base 4 of x cubed plus 8x. So when we take the derivative here, it's going to be very similar to what we did before. Um, we'll get 1 over whatever uh, is inside the parentheses, so x cubed plus 8x. Kind of the new part, again, in the denominator is we have to tack on this natural logarithm of the base. So we'll have to multiply the denominator by the natural logarithm of 4. And then by the chain rule, uh, we've got to take the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x cubed will just be 3x squared. The derivative of positive 8x will just be positive 8. And now we can just write, again, we can write the 3x squared plus 8 in the numerator all over x cubed plus 8x times the natural logarithm of 4. All right, um, part D illustrates something that's important with logarithms. Um, you know, we could take the derivative, so we want to take the derivative of all of this stuff. We could do 1 over all of this, and then we would have to take the derivative of, of you know, all the inside stuff by the chain rule, but then I would have to use the product rule a couple times and the chain rule a bunch, and uh, then to simplify that down might be a big old mess. But what we can use is we can use our properties of logarithms. So recall, if we have multiplication inside of a logarithm, that bus, we can break that up as addition. So this would be ln of x squared plus ln of the square root of x cubed plus 3x, but I'm going to write the square root, so x cubed plus 3x. I'm going to write the square root as the 1 half power. And then uh, plus we would have the natural logarithm of x plus 2 all raised to the fourth power. And the last thing we're going to do, uh, my, my exponent here is kind of on the inside. I could have equivalently pulled it out in the parentheses. It's all the same. But the idea is now I can pull this exponent, again using properties of logarithms, out front as a coefficient. So I can write ln of x squared as 2 times ln of x. Um, I can write the, this, what was a square root, I can pull that exponent of 1 half out front. And then we have ln of x cubed plus 3x left over. And then the same thing, we've got this uh, stuff being raised to the fourth power, so let's bring that stuff out front, and we'll have 4 times ln of x plus 2. And the good thing about this is, this is going to be much easier to take the derivative of than this original function that we started with. Still the same thing, but kind of in a better form. So now we will start taking uh, the derivative, just using the rules that we've seen. So our constant gets carried along uh, the 2. The derivative of ln of x, we've seen, that's just 1 over x. So then we have our 1 half. The derivative of ln of x cubed plus 3x, well, we'll get 1 over x cubed plus 3x. But then we have to take the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, so that'll give us 3x squared plus 3. And then the last thing we'll have to do is take the derivative of the 4 ln of x plus 2. So the 4 comes along, we'll get 1 over x plus 2. But when we take the derivative of the inside, uh, the x plus 2, the 1x will just turn into a 1, the 2 will turn into a 0, and now we've got our derivative. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 over x plus 1 over, uh, make sure you use parentheses here, x cubed plus 3x, because if you wanted to, I mean, if, 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 you did, if you wanted to not use parentheses, you'd have to distribute out the 2. Um, let's see, let me make sure I don't leave off the chain rule part. So let's stick our 3x squared. There's our plus sign, so plus 3. So 3x squared plus 3 is in the numerator. And then last but not least, we would have 4 over x plus 2. And there's our derivative. So Again, you know, I wouldn't get common denominators or, or combine this any further. I would probably leave it right there. Um, certainly, certainly much easier to use these properties of logarithms to break things up. So whenever you run into a natural logarithm or any kind of logarithm problem that you have to take the derivative on, um, if, you're, if you kind of do it straightforward and you're thinking, whew, this is getting really long and miserable, maybe you think, oh, yeah, hey, maybe I can break it up first, and uh, hopefully that will make things at least a little bit easier for you.